What's up everyone and welcome back to another episode of Forging Firesides. Today we're playing the game of how long will it take before the light dies because it literally happens every time it seems like so. Uh, I'm crossing my fingers that it lasts 20 minutes because that's all we really need here. But today I am with Olivia Martinez. Hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, hi, Olivia. How are you doing today? <laughs> Not bad, Hank. How are you? I'm okay. In a library all day? Yeah, it's that time of year, finals. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. have one basically every week. Because like, yeah. the way that my... I'm taking a night class, so we're having our final on our last class, which is Tuesday. And then I'm here until December 20th. Oh, like Tuesday is in two days from now? Yeah. Probably the day this goes up, so... Oh. Yeah, everyone, like, wish her luck when you see this. <laughs> yeah, please pray. <laughs> Wait, so what, what class is it for? That's for my uh, financial accounting class. Okay. All right. And that's, uh, is that for your minor then? It is for my minor. Yeah. Okay. I'm a business admin minor. Okay. I'm an IPE major. Yeah. How's that going? It's good. I mean, I really like my classes. It's interesting to get to take both Rose Hill and Gabelli classes. Yeah. They're really different from each other. And I feel like once you're in them at the same time, even you like just experience it. Uh, in a completely like different uh, way. How so? How are they different? Well, everything about Gabelli is so like career focused and practical. Okay. Um, like everything that you do is a skill that you can use in an interview or like for a job. Yeah. Whereas like my Rose Hill classes, like I'm taking a comparative culture class right now, an anthropology class. Okay. And we're talking about like diets and like industrialized food and how that plays into yeah. like developing nations and all sure. that stuff well i guess that could be just be like because that's like the theme of the class they it focus on different things or yeah. are you saying that like there's just like a different culture from class to class no there's definitely a different culture okay. from class to class okay. um like i'm in ground floor right now oh yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> It's a requirement, so we all have to take it. Are you the only junior there? Yeah, well, at least in my, like, direct section. Okay. I've seen other, like, upperclassmen when we have our lectures, like, yeah. breakout lectures, but I'm the only one in my class, and I'm the only female in my, like, small group. Okay. For, um, when we make our business plan, so. That's interesting. Yeah, it's, it is interesting. <laughs> I have a younger brother who's the same age. Okay. Um, he's a freshman at uh, St. John's in Queens. Yeah, yeah. So not, not your same age. The, no, no, the, sorry. The, the same age. age as the freshman, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, two years really isn't that big of a difference, but especially when you're in college, like a first semester freshman versus even like a second semester freshman is a totally different person. So like a first semester freshman versus a first semester junior. Okay. Uh, I feel like we just look at life differently. Yeah. You know? I, mean, I see it. Like fr freshman year is a wild time. Exactly. Yeah. What are the freshmen yeah. like in your class? The, um... <laughs> There, there's something. <laughs> Do you think any of them are watching this? Potentially. Uh-oh. Yeah. But, I mean, nothing bad. I guess... Well, actually, uh, no. Uh, a previous guest of mine. Yeah, he's is, in my small group. He's in your class. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jake of Jesuit University. That's right. The one and only. Yeah. 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 He's a character. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I just... I don't know. Like, I don't know if it's because they're freshmen or because they're in Gabelli, but they're so combative with the professor like yeah. if they don't get what they want right away it becomes like a giant issue and they just like fight her on all <laughs> of these things that's interesting yeah like, like why they just i don't know motivated <laughs> excited um well i mean a lot of it is in terms of like when we get our tests okay. and they all like don't answer a question well but it's ground floor and literally all the answers yeah, yeah. come from the book like just read the chapter and you'll get it yeah it's an easy class to just kind of like float through really I mean, it's an easy class. You don't even have to float. Like, you can get an A. Yeah. Like, I think anyone could really get an A in that class. Yeah. I had an interesting uh, circumstance with my ground floor class last year. It was just, like, I don't remember what happened, but, like, there was quizzes that were too hard. And eventually, like, he was curving. He was, like, if you got, like, a C plus, you got an A. Is like, yeah. what he did. It was crazy. Oh, like it, we got an eight-point curve on our last test. And I was, like, what the heck? Yeah, like, it was amazing. Yeah, we had a like curve on top of class. that. This like, an class. Like, I don't understand what the whole point of yeah. boosting these grades are but yeah it's like introduce yourself like I, I felt like i actually learned a lot in that class like mm -hmm. as i was going through it but then i realized now like a year later i don't remember any of it again I'm, i think like it's different types of skills that yeah. you learn like giving a presentation making a business plan like yeah, learning yeah, how to yeah. do financial stuff yeah i mean i remember like the basic like idea of the class and mm -hmm. like i guess the skills but like for instance when we were doing the breakout sessions and mm -hmm. um 
you learn about like um like accounting books or whatever um and i was like looking at that and i was like oh yeah i, I can do this like I, I got this and now like because of, you know, we only did that in one class like a year later i don't remember what i was looking at i don't remember what that was yeah, like so. but i guess like the whole gabelli curriculum especially if you're an actual gabelli student with like the consulting cub when you have to take all of those different types of classes i guess it plays out more than yeah i mean you have to take accounting too for the minor yeah it's i'm, I'm taking that next year so yeah six to nine p.m uh on thursdays and then on wednesdays i have stats from six to nine p.m stats was good i like yeah. stats i hope they're different enough uh they are I'm not gonna, okay good who do you have for stats i don't know i have I, a, it might have been just like a you know like an empty time slot that they don't have a professor mm. for yet I had the like a Rose Hill professor. What was his name? Greg Winzuski. Yeah, I don't know. It was yeah. um, good class. That, that's good. Easy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm hopefully looking forward to it because it seems like my schedule might be a little rough next year. But I think after next semester, because uh, I'm doing the business uh, admin minor mm-hmm. as well, um, and I th- like I think I'll be done after next semester, which would be really nice. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. How much more do you have to do? So I have the two now i took all my stats because of the ipe major mm-hmm. and stuff like that um and the econ ones oh, okay. so i've got like the elective ones to take i'm taking mm-hmm. one when i go abroad next semester to pretoria yeah. and then i'll have like two more to take when i get back senior year that's cool how, how do you like go about um like selecting classes when you're going to south africa so though so it's different than like fordham london because it's mm-hmm. not a Fordham program like yeah. I'm enrolled in a different university and the way that the South African like education system works is you like physically enroll in your classes when you get there the first week oh really yeah of like the semester so I does like I had my advisor sign off on the classes that I want to take and like hopefully I'll get into okay but when we get there um we have to register to take them is there like like a mad scramble to get in the class you want like the same that we have here or well UP it's like the size of Penn State. There's like 50,000 kids oh, there. So wow. they're giant lecture halls. Okay. Um, I mean, obviously, there's like a lot of people that have to take those classes too. Sure. But the way that the ad drop works, um, all of the people that I've talked to before about it, like got to take the classes that they wanted. So oh, I'm not like good. too worried about it. Yeah, it's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially when you're going abroad. You feel like there's like limited options, but you have to like get in certain stuff, especially yeah. when you're a junior at mm-hmm. this point. Yeah, I, I, like everything that I'm taking counts for my major or my minor. That's good. No electives or anything like that. Yeah. So I really need them all to figure out. Yeah. But S- South Africa, that's exciting though. Yeah, I'm really excited. You've been there before? I have not. I've been to like Mexico on spring break and my parents took my brother and me to like a Caribbean island once, but I, I've never been. I don't think those are the same thing. <laughs> They're not. <laughs> no, I've, I've definitely never been abroad. And I've definitely never been away from home for five oh, months. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So that'll be an interesting experience. I mean, like, I live in New York. I'm close. Here, yeah. So I see my parents like once a month. Yeah. So the, I'm not just going to like fly across the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. Are you going with um, other students from Fordham? Yeah. So it's a Fordham based program, but we're like located in the University oh, of Pretoria. Okay. So it is a Fordham yeah. program. But there's like 10 of us going and um, one other girl from St. Louis. Okay. Like yeah. There were some St. Louis kids like in the London program mm-hmm. when I was there and like a couple of Marquette kids too. Oh, okay. Yeah, Marquette College, yeah. That was, it was interesting because it was like literally everyone was from Fordham and then maybe like 5 to 10% of the kids were from St. Louis University or Marquette. Yeah, St. Louis University, that's where she's from. Yeah, SLU, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, classic. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you're busy with tests and stuff mm-hmm. coming up. Yeah. yeah. Done anything exciting? Listening to any music? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, per- perhaps by your all-time favorite band. I mean, I wouldn't say they're my all-time favorite <laughs> band, but uh, the 1975's new album came out on yes. Friday. Yeah. So I've been listening to that. Pretty good stuff. Yes. Yeah. See, I'm I'm not not a 1975 fan, at uh-huh. least before this album, because mm-hmm. I, I the first one came out like when we were in high school. Yeah. And like I like Chocolate a lot. That's a great song. But then, I don't know, it was just kind of like, it was like really like slickly produced, like kind of catchy album, but it wasn't super memorable for me, kind of blurred together. Yeah, I mean, and, I like as a 
high school or that's yeah, like what I yeah, listened maybe. to, I guess. But like it, it was fine. And then, then there was uh, the other one, like the, the one with the awful album title. It's like that's I, not an awful album title. It's so bad. Title. It's like I like it when you sleep because you're so beautiful yet so unaware of it. <laughs> okay, that's such a beautiful. That's such a nice sentence. Yeah, like the no, sentiment of that. That's the is actual. So pretty. Na- does that not just creep you? What I just did when no, I. <laughs> I mean, if you love someone. Like, if there's a reason that you're looking at them when they're asleep. It doesn't even have to be in a romantic way. Like, when you look at a little baby sleeping in their crib, you know? Like, they're completely unaware. Uh, Yes, I don't don't think he was talking about babies. uh, He wasn't talking about babies, but... But yeah, album title aside, that Mm -hmm. people, like, love that album so much. I think it's so boring. I like that. Okay, well, I also... I think that album is the catchiest. And the most, like, mainstream. Um, Like, like the sound and Love Me. Yeah, a lot of it's, like, the techno, like, the 80s... Yeah, but then, then they have, like, these six-minute tracks that are just, like, ambient noise, and they have, like, two of them back-to-back, and there's, like, four on the whole album. It's, like, an hour and a half long, and it's just, like, there's, like, three songs on there that I, like, remember and like, and it's just, I don't know. I mean, if you get past mm. the just, like, instrumental tracks. Yeah, I mean, I like instrumental tracks. I just don't think they're, were, they were like, working on the level to be, like, making that kind of ambitious project because I don't think it worked all the way. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, there's two uh kind of i guess on this uh, one yeah. they always have the intro like yeah. the 1975 yeah but i think it's interesting how they like use the same lyrics to that song oh yeah, but yeah they for the title produce track. it in like a different yeah yeah well yeah this way. new album this new album came out like two days ago mm-hmm. and this album's great <laughs> this yeah. is a different story <laughs> <laughs> um it's not so different. It still has like that sound, which is like one thing I can always give them credit for is that they do have a very distinct sound and it still sounds like a 1975 mm-hmm. album. Um, and I wouldn't call it like experimental, but they're like doing different things with the tracks. Like they have like a Cole Porter 1930s like jazz lounge mm-hmm. sort of, like song on there and they have like, like they mix things up and they take risks with like the songs they choose to do. But like the lyrics and the theme are like what make this album like really cool. Yeah, I think it's a really like the actual content of the songs yeah. and of the album is yeah. really different There's than a lot the of ones that have been before. It's, it's by the way, it's called a brief inquiry into online relationships. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's just like, like right away, um, not the first track, which is the 1975, but, um, the, uh, um, <laughs> man, I really like this song too. Yeah, Give yourself a try. Yeah, yeah, that was, like, the first uh, Yeah, like, right away, like, the first lyric is, like, you, you learn a lot of things when you get to my age or something mm-hmm. like that. And it's just, like, kind of, it sets up the whole album of, it's, like, him, like, reflecting on his experiences as, like, a millennial. He's, like, 29, he says. Um, but, yeah, it's, like, it doesn't, it feels like it's an album for people, like, growing up at this age, at this exact time. And it doesn't feel like it's too, like, preachy or, like, you know, for, like, the politics and stuff, even though there's definitely some of that in there. Mm -hmm. It just feels like a very, like, honest, like, sympathetic and well-thought-out, like, album. Yeah, well, it's definitely introspective, all of the content of it. I mean, he talks about, like, his heroin addiction and going Mm -hmm. to rehab and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, That's, like, pretty raw and pretty... Yeah, it really is. Like, for... Intimate stuff. Like, it's something I'd never expect to come from this band based Mm -hmm. on what I heard in the first album. Mm -hmm. Um... But yeah, like, uh, uh, love it, like, uh, what, uh, love, I love it, if, love it if we made it. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. That's a great song. That's like, there's like just so many like cool lines in there. It's mm-hmm. like reference like Lil Peep and like Kanye and like yeah. all this stuff. And it's like, it's just very smartly written and like, it's cool. I mean, like, like I said, the substance of the lyrics, like they're, he, like the four of them, that make up the band that write the songs like, mm-hmm. they're pretty smart dudes they're pretty like aware yeah. and with it in terms of like contemporary time and you know they mention themes of like postmodernism. Yep. and like what was one like coffee collection. like modernity has fa- like failed us yeah, or something yeah. like that like that's just so sick yeah it is and i, I love the um the closing track too uh, mm-hmm. i always want to die sometimes mm-hmm. like that's like a great way to end it like it's a it's in the perfect spot on the album mm-hmm. it's kind of sad but it's like uplifting at the same time honestly yeah when i was listening to that song i all i could imagine was like some indie movie like some coming of age yeah. story and like the main character is like running down the street like <laughs> crying or something like that yeah. i don't know you just like can picture mm. it being on the soundtrack yeah i feel like a lot of the songs could like be a part of a movie like i, I feel like it. they tell a story yeah. in a like really particular way yeah. that could be like visualized yeah and a lot and i think that song in particular could be kind of corny out of context but like yeah. within the structure of the album mm-hmm. like every song is better um especially like uh two time 
I, I hated that song one. when I first heard it because I only like listened to that one and mm-hmm. um, like another track before this came out because mm-hmm. I wasn't super into them. But um, like I didn't like that song, and I it's still like not my favorite. But like within the context of the album, like it's it's nice. It's kind of happy. It, it like fits better. Mm-hmm. Like it, there's it, it's like at home there. And it, yeah, I mean I disagree. I like the song on its own. Uh, really? Yeah, I think uh. it's like. It's, again, like one of those upbeat, catchy songs that you just want to like yeah. bop your head to yeah, it. Okay. Yeah. Kinda. I mean, the music video is just like Maddie Healy, like the lead. Sure. Uh, the front man. And like a bunch of millennials just like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. With like all the fans. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, I always like concepts like that, like videos like those. Yeah, it's fun. Mm-hmm. It's fun. I did see the uh, video for Give Yourself a Try and that was like really cool. Yeah. Even though it was just performing, but like in a glass room and mm-hmm. it just had like a lot of like energy and it fit the song. Like I love that really like squeaky guitar that's playing mm-hmm. the entire time. Yeah. It sounds really cool. But yeah, it's a great album. Go check it out, everyone. You know. Yeah. yeah. Give it a try. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was funny. Good one. Good I try, one. Hank. I try. Good one. <laughs> Well, it, it seems like you have to get back to studying, right? <laughs> yeah, I gotta go to the library. <laughs> All right, well, Olivia, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, thanks for talking 1975. Of course. I've had to talk about that album with someone because I was very surprised by yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, I feel <laughs> like out of our friends, I probably would have been the only one that probably, you could have. <laughs> probably. It's definitely not. I feel like they're not really like a guy's band. No, know? I, yeah. The whole reason that like I got into them in high school is because I was like a big One Direction fan. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> and all of my like music taste kind of like grew out of that. Okay. So like One Direction's British, yeah. they're British. They like wrote a song for One Direction, which is really interesting. Um, really? Yeah, okay. I can't remember which one. I would know. Yeah. Yeah. So like that was like kind of the way that I got into them. My friends okay. liked them. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. I can't wait to listen to it again very soon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. I have maybe a handful of episodes coming out uh, this semester still. I don't have a solid number yet, but I definitely know there's at least two in the works. So, But after that, there will be a break during break, and I'll be back in January. But until then, uh, watch my videos. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>